Hey Scrappers, it's Tom from the iScrap app and in this episode of Scrapulator, we're going to talk about the difference between a metal and the difference between an alloy. Now if you have any questions for us, you can always ask those, but before we get into the difference between a metal and an alloy, hey, we want you to join and subscribe to our Apple Podcasts and our Spotify account. This way you always know when our podcasts are coming out, you can learn about them, listen to them on your drive to and from the scrapyard, and hopefully we can help you make more money with your scrap. Now this podcast came about because a scrapper asked us, hey, we heard about alloys before, why are they so different than metals? Now a quick answer is an alloy is a marriage or a baby that's made between two metals and a metal was just pulled out of the ground. So copper, for instance, is a metal. People mine copper, companies mine copper, and if you look at the periodic table of elements, I'm sure you remember that back from your high school science days, all of the metals that are on there, those are metals and not alloys. That's why you don't see brass pop up on the periodic table. But brass is an alloy, and you know what happened was you had copper walking along, and then you had zinc walking along, and they liked each other. They got married, and a baby popped out, and that was brass. Where copper was mined from the ground, and when you have a piece of copper, it almost looks like, like a gold nugget would, but of course, it's a copper alloy. Excuse me, the copper metal, the copper color, sometimes it will have that green patina to it because it's in the ground, the oxidation, and that would be the difference. Now, with copper, with other items like iron, these are not always what people need to make buildings, to make electronics, or things like that. So they needed to create these alloys. Now, back in the Middle, time, the, the, the middle Ages, you just had iron swords, right? And as things progressed and they, they were able to figure out chemistry and work with things, things, people like blacksmiths, they started to come in and they started to experiment, taking different types of metals, melting them together, and, and even dates back to the Roman ages where they were starting to take copper and they were fooling around mixing it with gold and silver and these other types of metals just to see what would happen. Now, alloys that you might deal with in the scrap industry, a perfect example, stainless steel. Stainless steel is primarily made of iron, believe it or not. Between 60 and 80% of regular 304 stainless is going to be iron, but you're going to have another metal in there, nickel. So now when you have nickel and iron combined, you have a really strong metal, stainless steel, whether it's 304 or 316, 303, 300 series, 400 series, there's many different types of stainless alloys, and they're all used in different applications. Some of them need to be a higher temperature alloy that can you know, withstand higher heat or It'll be in a hospital where they'll use a lot of stainless steel pipe because it's clean and surgical tables are stainless steel because they don't have germs sticking to them a lot. That's where you might see stainless steel applied. Now with like a 316 stainless, it might be purely medical. Some different operators will use it when they build airplanes. But when you have items like chromium and nickel and iron all meshed together inside of these different chemistries, they figured out what works well together. And I'll give you an example of an alloy that you could use every single summer, and that's your stainless steel grill. Now many of you scrappers know when you take that magnet and you stick it to many of those grills, it does not stick, whammo, you have a score because you found non-magnetic stainless. But some advertisers say that they have you know, stainless steel grills, they just don't tell you what the grade is. And when you hit it with your magnet, while it doesn't rust, it will stick and then you have a 400 series. So that 400 series was made with a higher concentration of iron, which made it cheaper to produce, but they still were able to put enough nickel in there where it didn't rust. Another good example of a metal versus an alloy is really brass and copper. Brass or bronze have all these different mixes together. Bronze could be 85 to 90% copper. They could have nickel in there. They could have zinc. They could have lead. They could have tin. Not like light iron tin, but like 
tin SN, which is another periodic table of uh, elements metal mixed in there to make bronze, where yellow brass could be primarily 60 to 70, 75% copper, and then a mixture of zinc and some other alloys. And that would be something like your sink, where bronze might have you know, a lot of uh, plates are made, a lot of symbols are made with bronze, a lot of different plumbing fixtures for commercial use are made with bronze, just because they want them to be a little better grade and they've learned that the yellow brass is more for residential and the red brass has traditionally been more for commercial use. Now another alloy that you might not think about and probably something that you're not scrapping often is gold. You know, of course gold is a metal, you can pull it out of the ground, but they don't sell 24 karat gold jewelry. Why? Because it would be too soft. If you put a 24 karat ring on, it would be really flat really quickly because gold is such a soft metal. Gold, when you have it as a jewelry, once in a while you'll see a 22 karat gold, and that generally originally originated out of India, and it has a really deep yellow color to it. It's really beautiful, but when you add more and more alloys and more metals into that gold, that's when you go from a 22 to an 18, down to a 14, even a 10 karat, and that could be mixed with copper, silver, Sometimes white gold will be coated with rhodium, which we've talked about from catalytic converters. But jewelry is generally not going to be just one type of metal. It's generally going to be an alloy. Now, you could have certain jewelry like a platinum band where it is going to be just platinum, but platinum is a stronger metal. It's a little denser, so it's not going to be you know, really malleable. It's not going to get too soft on you. And that's just another example. Other things you can think about, Pewter. Pewter can be found in old cups and silverware. You probably remember going to your, your grandparents' house for Thanksgiving or Christmas or a holiday or a big family get-together, and they might have pulled out some old dark-colored German uh, silverware or cookware or plates, right? The Germans were known for making these pewter designs. They have a very dull color to them. They actually could have a high value, but those are another example of different metals, a tin, solder, SN tin, where they mix them with lead, which is another metal, and they make another type of thing. So alloys and metals, they're not always easy to figure out, but if you start to look at them and say, did this come from the ground? Just ask that question. Have you ever heard of a mining operation for brass? No, but you've heard it for copper or silver or gold or platinum, palladium, rhodium, iron, right? Iron continues to be the most abundant metal on the earth, probably why it's the cheapest. It's also one of the strongest, so it helps out really well. But even iron can be combined with other alloys when they make I-beams because they want to be able to make it non-corrosive they want it to last longer so when you're building skyscrapers or power plants or large structures by putting a little bit of an alloy mix in with that iron it could be nickel or a couple of other different ones it just strengthens it up another good example would be galvanized steel where it's iron based but it's coated with zinc because the zinc will make it a little more non-corrosive and of course you can use your magnet and stick it to it but it just gives you another idea on how they blend these different metals to create alloys so you can learn more about what you're scrapping so you know what to look for what not to look for and really just to learn how things came about Scrappers, this is Tom from the iScrap app, and in this episode of Scrap You Later, hopefully we answered your questions on alloys and metals, but if we didn't, let us know so we can answer it again in a more clear way. Until next time, make sure you follow us on Apple and Spotify, and I'll scrap you later.